Hello everyone, my name is Cameron Ahmed and I'm a radiation oncologist at Moffitt Cancer Center. Over the past uh, several years, I've had the opportunity to work with uh, Dr. Torres Roca, Dr. Stephen Eskridge, Dr. Uh, Jacob Scott, as well as many others in our department to uh, develop and validate the radio sensitivity index and the genomically adjusted radiation dose for the personalization of radiation therapy dosing to different tumor types using genomics. And in today's talk, I'm going to be giving an overview of our uh, work in this area. These are my disclosures. So the outline for my talk, first I'll talk about the development and the validation of the radio sensitivity index and the need for personalization of radiotherapy dosing in radiation oncology. Then we'll talk about how the radio sensitivity index can be used in the treatment of metastatic disease to personalize dosing. And then I'll close with the genomically adjusted radiation dose, its development, and our validation studies supporting its use. So there's certainly a need for a personalized approach in radiation oncology. So as radiation oncologists, we strive to deliver high quality radiation, which for us means conformal radiation therapy with excellent volume coverage. But largely this is uh, uniform empiric dosing without tailoring radiation therapy dosing to patient tumor biology. So in doing so, patients with a similar tumor stage and location are put into uh, groups of patients who either will have a therapeutic benefit, no benefit, or adverse effects. But how can we personalize the delivery of radiation therapy based on tumor biology so that patients who had received no benefit from radiation therapy or had adverse effects can be put into that cohort of patients that can have optimal outcomes? So based on the need to personalize radiation tumor dosing based on tumor biology, uh, the radiation sensitivity index was developed. The radio sensitivity index is a 10 gene signature, which is shown here in the, in, uh, in the oval. Um, the radiation sensitivity index goes from zero to one, where a higher score or a score closer to one indicates that the tumor is more radio resistant, whereas a score closer to zero indicates that the tumor is more radio sensitive. The development of the radiation sensitivity index was, took place in two main steps. First, genes were selected using a linear algorithm that correlated the surviving fraction of cells at 2 gray to biological parameters such as tissue of origin and uh, mutations in RAS and P53. A total of 7,000 genes were initially screened, and from these genes, a total of 10 genes, which were found to be the most interconnected, were used to create a gene expression model, which um, became the radio sensitivity index. Uh, since the initial validation studies, the radiation sensitivity index has been locked into place and we have validated its use in multiple different cancer types across multiple different institutions with multiple uh, endpoints. So as you can see here on this slide, the radiation sensitivity index has predicted clinical outcomes in patients who are treated with radiation therapy in over uh, 1,400 uh, patients. The radiation sensitivity index has specifically been validated in tumor types such as breast cancer, lung cancer, glioblastoma, pancreas, prostate, uterine, and head and neck tumors. However, importantly, since the radiation sensitivity index is specific to patients that have received radiation therapy, it has not been shown to predict clinical outcomes in patients that do not receive radiation therapy. So you can see here on this slide that the radiation sensitivity index did not predict clinical outcomes in patients treated with breast, lung, glioblastoma, pancreas, uterine, and prostate cancer in patients not treated with radiation therapy. So one of the things that we've been interested in looking at is the radiation sensitivity index of metastatic sites. 
So as radiation oncologists, a larger and larger portion of our practice is becoming the treatment of oligometastatic disease or the treatment of patients that have a few metastatic sites. So specifically in this study, we wanted to look at what the radiation sensitivity index told us about liver metastasis. So as I mentioned, a score of zero on this scale uh, on the y-axis shows that a tumor is more radiosensitive, whereas a score closer to one indicates that the tumor is more radioresistant. So now looking at all these uh, liver metastases with the primary histology shown here on the x-axis, you can see here that the most radioresistant uh, liver metastases were of GI stromal tumor origin as well as melanoma whereas the most radiosensitive tumor types were small in, uh, intestinal neuroendocrine tumors, anal squamous cell carcinoma, pancreas adenocarcinoma, lung adenocarcinoma, and breast adenocarcinoma. And furthermore, we found that the uh, outcomes um, that we found with the radiation sensitivity index of liver metastasis uh, correlated to our clinical outcomes treating these patients um, and sites of liver metastasis with uh, stereotactic body radiation therapy. Um, so we found that um, as um, noted by the radiation sensitivity index, non-colorectal tumors uh, such as anal squamous cell carcinoma um, and uh, lung adenocarcinoma um, as well as uh, breast adenocarcinoma were more radiosensitive than colorectal tumors. So when treated to uniform doses, we found that these patients who had colorectal tumors uh, fared worse. And this corresponded to the outcomes from other institutions as well. So we were also interested in looking at the differences, of, differences in the radiation sensitivity index of lung metastasis based on primary histology. Um, so similarly, we found that there was a large variation in terms of uh, the um, radiation sensitivity index of lung metastasis um, of tumor types that were housed in our institutional data bank. Um, so we found that the highest median RSIs of lung metastasis were noted in melanoma, soft tissue sarcoma, as well as endometrial adenocarcinoma, whereas lung metastasis of primary breast adenocarcinoma uh, renal cell carcinoma as well as oral cavity squamous cell carcinoma were more radiosensitive. So similar to our findings in uh, liver metastasis, we also wanted to compare what the treatment outcomes were at our institution, uh, treatment tumors with um, stereotactic body radiation therapy to lung metastasis and well, whether these correlated to clinical outcomes. Uh, in these patients as well, and we found that this was the case. Uh, we found that radioresistant tumors of primary uh, melanoma as well as soft tissue sarcoma histology fared worse than lung metastasis of primary colon, um, breast, and uh, head and neck uh, squamous cell origin. Uh, so this tells us that there might be a role for personalizing the dose of stereotactic body radiation therapy dosing in both lung and uh, liver metastasis to optimize clinical outcomes based on primary histology. So how can we utilize the radiation sensitivity index to inform radiation therapy dosing? So we know there's certainly a one-size-fits-all approach to radiation therapy dosing in different tumor types um, is not ideal. Um, so our hypothesis was that empiric uniform RT dosing is not optimal solution for the majority of patients. And then how can we utilize the radiation sensitivity index to better inform radiation therapy dosing? And is there a way to potentially quantify this? So with this fact in mind, uh, we developed the genomically adjusted radiation dose. So this slide shows a schematic of how we can determine the uh, genomically adjusted radiation dose or GARD. Um, so tumor mass is either resected or undergoes a biopsy. Um, and from that tissue, uh, it undergoes gene expression. And from that gene expression data, we can uh, determine the uh, radiosensitivity index score, which is a score from zero to one. Um, and that can be then inputted into the formula, which is shown here, to then determine the genomically adjusted radiation dose. 
So in this formula, the genomically adjusted radiation dose is equal to the number of fractions times the, uh, the daily dose of radiation therapy, um, as well as the patient-specific alpha value um, plus uh, the constant beta, um, and then the daily dose of radiation therapy that's delivered. Now, the genomically adjusted radiation dose is a variation of the biologic effective dose, but it takes into account the unique uh, patient tumor biology from the radiation sensitivity index. And then we can then model the genomically adjusted radiation dose to determine what the probability of control is and the optimal radiation dose that should be delivered to a specific tumor type. We published these findings um, in uh, 2016, um, where we uh, validated our approach for the determination of the genomically adjusted radiation dose. You can see here on this slide what the uh, modeling of uh, 60 gray of radiation therapy can mean to different tumor types. So you can see that um, the, there is a, a wide variation in terms of what that effect of radiation therapy dosing is when you also take into account the unique tumor's heterogeneity and biology. So you can see on here uh, tumor types that are commonly treated to 60 gray such as bladder cancer, lung cancer, melanoma, sarcomas, and brain tumors have various uh, genomically adjusted radiation doses uh, due to inherent differences in tumor biology. So we have validated the genomically adjusted radiation dose in five independent data sets of breast, pancreatic, glioblastoma, and lung tumors um, to differing endpoints showing that various doses of radiation therapy are needed um, for different tumor types in order to achieve an optimized clinical outcome. Now, looking specifically at um, the genomically adjusted radiation dose in triple negative breast cancer management, we validated our findings in two independent cohorts of triple negative breast tumors. So we know as radiation oncologists that the largest effect that we're having in adjuvant breast cancer management is in terms of local control or the um, prevention of the tumor coming back within the uh, treated breast tissue. So we found that um, the genomically adjusted radiation dose needed um, in this data set in order to achieve and optimize local control was 21. Uh, furthermore, then we looked at the dose um, that would be needed across the patient cohort in order to achieve a genomically adjusted radiation dose of 21. So uh, treating all patients to 50 gray, uh, we found that about half of patients would have uh, a genomically adjusted radiation dose of 21 or would have that improved local control outcome. Um, so that tells us that about half of patients are being overdosed and then about half of patients are being underdosed. So um, what we can then specifically then tell with this patient cohort is that um, quite a few patients can be treated to, local, uh, treated to lower doses and achieve um, an improved local control, whereas some tumors may need to have higher doses of radiation therapy delivered in order to achieve an optimized uh, local control. So this dose will differ for specific tumor types, um, but utilizing the radiation sensitivity index uh, allows us to then determine which uh, tumor types this would be to specifically quantify which tumor types can be treated to uh, lower doses than what we uh, commonly do in adjuvant breast cancer management, as well as which tumor types would need higher doses in order to achieve an optimized clinical outcome. So in conclusion, the radiation sensitivity index is an extensively validated genomic signature that characterizes the radiosensitivity of individual tumor types. The genomically adjusted radiation dose is a clinically actionable metric based on the radiation sensitivity index that, can help, that helps tell us the specific radiation therapy dose needed in order to optimize uh, clinical outcomes for that specific tumor type. Um, and we have multiple future clinical trials that are planned to test the use of the radiation sensitivity index and the genomically adjusted radiation dose 
to personalize the radiation therapy uh, dosing scheme on based off of and uh, genomics of that individual tumor type. Uh, I, I'd like to acknowledge the groups that have funded our research, as well as supporters at the Total Cancer Care Database um, and the Merck Moffitt Cancer Center Research Collaboration, which has allowed us to uh, perform tissue studies to uh, determine the radiation sensitivity index and the development of the genomically adjusted radiation dose. And um, I want to acknowledge the patients and their families that have donated tissue uh, to these uh, institutional databases. And um, specifically want to acknowledge um, Dr. Torres Roca as well as Dr. Stephen Eskridge who have um, co-developed the Radiation Sensitivity Index. And uh, want to acknowledge uh, Dr. Jacob Scott who is one of our former residents who is now at Cleveland Clinic who helped develop the genomically adjusted radiation dose and the multiple faculty members in our department as well too have, a, who have been working on validating the radiation sensitivity index and the genomically adjusted radiation dose in various tumor types. Um, thank you.